Hi, this is Emily Lee, part of Art from the Heart, and this video is part of Ellen Hudson's Essentials by Ellen Spring 2017 release. I'll be featuring the Swing and Slide dies. Interactive cards are very popular, and you'll be excited to get the perfect variety of shapes and sizes of interactive dies in this set. To show how they work, I'll also be using the Oh Dear stamp set and coordinating dies. All three of the sets I'm featuring in this video were designed by Julie Ebersol, and you're going to love them. Let's get started. I'm using Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock for all three of my cards on today's hop. I'll be heat embossing all the images, so I'll start by using the magic powder bag on the panel and stamping all of the deer with Versafine Onyx Black pigment ink. I apply clear embossing powder and set it with my heat tool. Now I'm ready to watercolor these darling deer. I start by adding water to the images and this will let the watercolor flow freely. I used brushed corduroy distress ink on the top of the deer and gathered twigs on the bottom. Then I used my heat tool to speed up the drying process. As I mentioned in previous videos, I like to cut apart my images if I'm die cutting a bunch at once because I find that the machine sometimes shifts dies against the next and then they're off center even if they're taped down. Cutting them apart ensures that the dies aren't right next to each other and I can still run them through at the same time. I just like to stamp them really close to one another to conserve the watercolor cardstock because it's expensive and I want to be able to use every square inch. Since I want the mom and baby to leap across the card from left to right along the swing and slide die, I'm going to group them together. The sentiment I'm using says, you are a deer. Now I'm trying to figure out where to die cut the slot for the interactive portion of the card. I'm using the smallest of the arches. If I made a much longer card, I could have incorporated two arches and had the mom and baby leaping separately. It would be fun to try that version. I also wanted to make sure they were in the right position relative to the sentiment, which is why it's there to help me with spacing. Now I'm going to stamp the sentiment and I'll be heat embossing it just like the deer. Next, I'm going to create the setting around the deer. I'll be using the triangle confetti as the ground. I'll also use the sprigs as berry bushes. I'm going to flip the panel upside down in the misty to do this since my stamps will be off the edge and I need that extra bit of space to maneuver them around the bottom edge and sides of the card. I'll start with the confetti at the center and move towards the outer edges. First I stamp it with peeled paint distress ink and then use shabby shutters to give it depth. I'll be misting all the distress ink stamped images at the bottom of the panel after the scene is finished. This will allow the colors to blend a bit and create a blurred, dreamy look for the card. When the greenery is finished, it's time to move on to the berry bushes. I'm going to use three different distress inks for this. I start with abandoned coral then use festive berries and worn lipstick. The three pinks on the left side of the card are stamped in reverse or mirror image order of the colors on the right. After all the stamping is done, I'm going to use festive berries distress ink to color in the hollow letters in the sentiment. I use a damp brush directly on the ink pad to pick up the color. Now I'm going to use a mister to spray water on the stamped distress inks. This will cause the colors to fade and spread into each other. Again, I use my heat tool to speed up the drying process. When the panel is dry, I decide I want to sponge blues around the remaining white edges of the card to completely frame the scene. I'm going to use tumbled glass and broken china for the sky section. Then I lightly mist the newly sponged areas and speed dry the panel with my heat tool. I've cut a card base that opens on the right. I prefer my cards not opening from the bottom because they never stand well over the long term. Before assembling the card, I'm going to adhere the baby to the mom with glue dots. To help me position the mom and baby, I add foam tape to the dad and pop him up on the panel. We no longer use pennies in Canada, so it was hard for me to find one. I certainly didn't want to use a nickel for this, but you can use slaughter elements which are made for this purpose. Then I attach a spin and slide disc to the penny with a glue dot, and I'll link to both of these products down below, as well as on my blog. Both are sold at Ellen Hudson for your convenience. I attach another glue dot on the other side of the disc and adhere the mom and baby dear to it. Now you can see how they make the leap from the left side of the card to the dad. Now I need to pop up this panel, leaving enough height for the penny to move. I'm going to stack two layers of fun foam instead of using foam tape. After I adhere the two layers of foam tape together and before I adhere them to the front panel, I'm going to mark the opening of the swing and slide die with a pencil. I need to make sure the fun foam doesn't interfere with the penny, so I use my scissors to cut away the fun foam around it. Then I apply adhesive and attach the fun foam to pop up the panel on the card base. Now my card is done. Here's the interactive part in action. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to having more playtime with all of these products. 
Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog to comment for a chance to win a stamp set of your choice from this release. Thanks so much for watching!